Folks, the 24th year of this great sport and UFC leading the way has come to a close and we are here to cover it for you. This is the 2016 After Buzz, UFC's year-end in review and it begins right now. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Nice. <laughs> This song is old, but it doesn't get old. You know what I mean? So did, they, did they pick that song because it came around the same time that UFC started? 24 kind of years early ago. Early 90s, yeah. 24, early 90s would be when this song uh, came out, which really ends up meaning that you and I are dating ourselves by loving I know, loving I was like in fourth or fifth grade. I think fourth grade, I think. Yeah. Uh, funny fact, kids that are um, born in the year 2001 drive motor vehicles now. So that's what happens. Wow. So... Um, good wow. evening, folks. My name, or wherever you are, might be good morning. It might be good day to you. My name is Christian Cole. I am your UFC's After Buzz uh, um, After Show host, and I'm here with you to talk about UFC. And I am joined by a good friend of mine, a close colleague, a guy within the pro wrestling business and MMA business, a guy that knows a lot about combat sports in general. This is George Hermosa That's to right. my left. You can always follow me on the Twitter, Instagram, all the above. Uh, G Hermosa, G H E R M O Z A. It should be like right there, around there. It could G -H -E -R -M -O -Z -A. be here. Hermosa A. Here? Yeah, just about there. Is it there? Yeah. Um, folks, if you don't follow us already, you can follow both of us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of those places. If you don't follow AfterBuzz, it is crucial for you to get started right away. AfterBuzz, always tweeting about the local goings-ons with the company, all the things you can watch from, from after shows on American Idol, mm -hmm. all the way to UFC coverage, ESPN's Monday Night Football. This, this network is covering everything, and we're doing it for you with exclusive coverage here at, at AfterBuzz. And the main thing about it is, I know like we watch a lot of the TV, you know, the... the the John Annex and all the uh, the fighters that come on, we're we're all fans. That's the main sure. thing. We're all fans. We love watching this stuff. We love talking about this stuff, which is why we're here. Which is why we're here talking about all about 2016 UFC. Indeed, we are talking about two, 2016, and we should get started really with the way that the year ended. I mean, an incredible ending to an incredible year in mixed martial arts. All kinds of records were set by the UFC. The company was sold, but we start with Ronda Rousey in the main event of UFC 207 just about a week ago, mm -hmm. losing in incredible fashion to Amanda Nunes and Nunes actually keeping her uh, UFC bantamweight championship. Nunes, an incredible performance, George Ramosa. What did you see from Nunes, and what can we expect from the champion going I forward? I think we saw nothing different. I think we saw no surprises from Amanda Nunes. It was more so surprising from the challenger itself. Mm. It's kind of funny that we're kind of recapping 2016 when, when, when this kind of comeback for Rousey is kind of a year in the making. She lost last November. A lot of people were asking immediately, when is she going to fight again? The rumblings heard like maybe late 2017 she was going to come back. Oh, there's no way she's going to fight in 2016. So it kind of fits that we're doing this show. Last show of the year, two days or one or two days before the new year, Ronda Rousey comes back. Um, Amanda Nunes looked as strong as she always did. Um, you know, obviously she looked very strong against Misha Tate. You know, she's had a lot of good fights, you know, in 2016, not just against Tate, but against others. Um, so we kind of saw nothing out of the ordinary for Nunes. Nothing, nothing, you know, she's as great as she always is. She yeah, I mean, she's a, a beast. I mean, she comes in there, she looks cut, she looks ready to fight. Um, you know, the, this is the type of girl that probably has difficulty making that weight. She's mm -hmm. that big of, yeah. a, of a human being. Um, and she looked intimidating, and she didn't look intimidated. And I think that anybody might get caught up in the moment when you're fighting a celebrity that is mm -hmm. Ronda Rousey. Because I mean, you fight, you fight to fight, right? And you fight for prizes, you fight for championships, you fight for money, you fight mm -hmm. for your family. But in this case, you have her fighting against sort of a legacy mm -hmm. in, in Ronda Rousey. And just, I mean, for lack of a better way to say it, this girl just ran right through her. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was a, a striking seminar from beginning to end. The fight only lasted 48 seconds. Um, you know, with Ronda losing in the way that she did to Holly Holm in 2015, getting knocked out there, mm -hmm. uh, and then getting knocked out by by hands in this fight, a little bit of a different t type of knockout, never really being able to dis to display her jujitsu. What you know, we saw statements from Ronda's team all week. What do you think about Ronda Rousey? If you were her coach or you were her agent, George Hermosa, hmm. what are you telling your client Ronda Rousey to do? If in I 2017? was her agent, I'd say get a new coach. Yeah. If I was her, if I was her coach, she'd probably saying he's probably saying you know I'm doing nothing wrong you know whatever whatever. But I mean we clearly see that. And again, I think the best the best uh, way to put it as Amanda Nunes in a post fight conference, she pretty much said it best is that her coach has her thinking that she's this world class boxer, when in reality, I mean she really she really isn't. 
we know what she's good at and not once did we kind of see that even close to coming in fruition in that fight it's like, like i said I, I think they had a they had a micro not maybe not microphone on edmund but just kind of you know you can hear him kind of saying like you know you're quicker than her right you know duck the punches or kind of move around like no like she's not a boxer yeah, and I don't understand who's trying to convince her that she is a boxer. Like, it's almost as if there are all kinds of conspiracy theorists mm -hmm. in, in, with the super fans that are watching and joining us at home. Um, and the idea really is that they, people are thinking that he's sabotaging her at this point. Because why are you telling her when, you're, when she's fighting a world champion boxer in Holly Holm a year ago, and then she goes up against Nunes, who Nunes is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, uh -huh. and, and she's a real MMA well-rounded fighter. But anybody that's seen her fights knows that Amanda Nunes has hands. Uh -huh. So why are you telling your, your girl to go in there and throw hands with one of the best boxers in MMA in Amanda Nunes? And it showed. Ronda, Ronda's, just her guard alone and her head, her head movement, or lack thereof, is is not it, it, this isn't to say like i'm not trying to throw shade at ronda rousey mm -hmm. i am one of those people who as much as i don't like her her persona mm -hmm. i'm very proud of what she's been able to do for yeah, mma absolutely. i certainly understand the weight that's been put on her shoulders and the celebrity and all the other things but what i don't understand is why if you're if you're her coach why are you sending her in there and telling her to stand up she won her first 12 fights with arm bars. Why is she not immediately going for a double leg? What do you think? I mean, I agree with you. I mean, it's one of those things where it, it just depends on what she wants to do next because that's what it all comes down to. Is she going to fight again? Yes or no. What is it that you want to accomplish in, in this sport now? Because obviously she did accomplish already a lot. Like, what is really there left for her to do? I, I don't know if she's officially 30 yet. Maybe she's pushing 30. Maybe yeah. she just turned 30. I think, if anything, she's pushing 30. Um, but I know if she said before that she doesn't want to fight in her 30s. So it just depends on whatever it is that she wants to do. If she wants to make another legitimate crack at it, if she truly is the athlete that she grew up, you know, to be an Olympian. She was an Olympian, you know, in judo. A uh, uh, medalist in judo, if anything. Um, she grew up as an athlete. So it depends what she wants to do. Is that going to be... Is she, is she just set? Like, you know, she's obviously got the money. You know, she, she, I think she made $3 million just for I mean, $3 million for 48 seconds, yeah. George Ramosa. So just, so just alone and, and showing up, $3 mil. So yeah. that, who's to say she's not going to get uh, In 48 seconds, more. I usually make like, you know, $1.26. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not even not that. Not even that. Yeah. <laughs> so who's to say that she's, I mean, she's going to make a lot more when you get the pay-per-view revenue back. Sure. Um, but again, just whatever she wants to do. If she wants to fight again, you need to get a new coach. Like, straight up. Like, but admin, is, this, is, this, is this a case? I love her loyalty. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But... But is this you the case of her sort of being complacent with her coach? Or what do you, what, give me some speculation here, because the super fans who join us at home, we all want to have this conversation. We all want to know what's up with Ronda Rousey. Why continue to go? And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to overstate this, right? She mm -hmm. only lost two fights in a row. Yeah. It's not like she lost ten fights. But in no, a row. but let's be real. Like her last fight, that was like embarrassing. It was. Like you, you say, people said a lot about CM Punk, and then it had nothing to do with lasting longer. Just like she just looked bad, dude. Like yeah. she looked. Now you're talking really about the, the home fight right now. No, no, no. Well, this, oh, the most recent fight, the Nunes, Nunes fight. Yeah. yeah, she looked horrible. It was like, really bad. You, you, you would have no idea this was the same Ronda Rousey that did all those things in the previous three, four years. Like yeah. you would have never thought this was the same person. You, you would have thought Dana went in the crowd and picked out a fan exactly. and said. He was going to pay her to try and fight. Exactly. Yeah. This looked horrible. And I feel so bad for her because, you know, you know, it broke her heart. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and again, I'm sure it's heartbreaking for a lot of a lot more fighters. But again, this was Ronda Rousey. Like, yeah. just imagine two years ago where she was. No, you she, also can't forget two years ago when she stood in the MMA cage and refused to shake hands with Misha Tate. Yeah. And when she was really acting kind of a, like a dick, mm -hmm. like everywhere she went. Um, but and, even looking now, like no media appearances before that. The only time she made an appearance was the weigh-ins. Well, what are you going to say? Why, why would you go and talk to the media when the last thing you did was get knocked out by a foot by Holly Holm, and now here you are you're fighting a champion? Maybe in her mind she knows that she doesn't have it anymore. If someone offered me $3 million to go fight, whether I thought I could win or not, I'm going to mm -hmm. go fight. I don't yeah. care if it's Mike Tyson or whatever. It's $3 million bucks, mm -hmm. right? Um, but she didn't. She didn't have a strategy going into this fight, and everyone talked about how hard she worked, how hard the camp was hard. Mm -hmm. She took it seriously. No, no media interviews. But did she have the right game plan? And was it really her coach's fault, or is it? Does it end up being in her, in like in her hands too? I mean, you can't keep listening to the guy who tells you to stand up. Yeah. You could watch your own tape, put it on your DVR, look at your hands, and know like I don't really, I can't box that well. Maybe I shouldn't box a world champion boxer like Holly Holm. I mean, I like. I mean, we are. I think the Ronda that I that I remember seeing when she was well, when she had Gene LaBelle in her corner every single fight. Yeah. You know, where's he? Classic at? Ronda. Yeah, yeah. Where's he at? Like, yeah. I haven't seen him in a while. True. You know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she's relying too much on Edmund because at the end of the day. 
it's not really oh god i feel like they're gonna come after me right now because they're in the valley uh i feel like that camp isn't really that good of a camp like you look at everybody else that's gone in yeah don't, Shana, don't say it too uh, the, loud the it's other, a block from him yeah. <laughs> the other four horsemen how was their success in the ufc look at what happened to travis brown when he started fight, you know training with them right he hasn't done anything right so i don't know maybe it, it's one of those things where i i appreciate somebody's loyalty but dude if you if you truly want to be a success in this business you got to look at other options you you hear it all the time where you hear you know cerrone trains at jackson winkle winkle john um, but he he goes other places too, you know. Like you have all these guys that they're not they're open to other options. Yeah, they don't pigeonhole themselves yeah. in one camp. They go move around. And I, and I think you're right. And I think you asked a minute ago, like, what does Ronda Rousey really want from this business? Mm -hmm. And it's a great question because maybe she really doesn't want anything. Maybe she's done what she's what she could do. Mm -hmm. She's really ran through that division for about two or three years, and and no one could touch her. Mm -hmm. And maybe the division has passed her up a little bit, and maybe the passion has passed her up. She's sitting on a few million bucks. I know she's interested in having a family. I think she's still dating Travis Brown, which mm -hmm. was a big thing from 2016 mm -hmm. about them wanting to start a family so whatever ends up happening happening to ronda rousey i would say you know i wish her well but if she decides to, to train again for another fight in 2017 she she should have no no and i mean no inkling of any type of motivation whatsoever to go and fight with edmund and and his camp because they have done her wrong mm-hmm I agree. Agreed? I agree. Right on. Um, I want to move along to that next fight that we did have at UFC 207. This this was a surprise for me. I, I don't know if it was for you. Um, we saw uh, Cody Garbrandt defeat Dominic Cruz, a fighter who had only lost one fight in his career, mm -hmm. a veteran of the MMA cage. Cody Garbrandt goes in and takes his title in a five-round decision, which to me was a very, really, like, even though it was a decision, it was a really entertaining fight, and it was one of those dominant performances by one side. There was a point, and I think there's memes all over the place now, where you saw Garbrandt sort of uh, like dodging every with the head movement. I mean, if Garbrandt could work with Ronda for like mm -hmm. 10 seconds, she'd learn how to move her head a little yeah. bit. Um, but what we saw was we saw Cody Garbrandt go from being sort of an unknown to having a really great 2016 and ending it with a title. And what I saw from Garbrandt, and I want to hear your opinion on this, I saw Garbrandt as being sort of this Fox Sports shit-talking uh, stirring the pot, getting everybody heated up for the fight. But then at the end of this fight, he wins the title. He takes a, a, a young kid, a cancer patient that he had been uh, befriending for mm -hmm. a while, and put him in the cage and put the title around him. And it was such an interesting moment it for me. It made you like him a what, lot more. Yeah. Like, I literally was going from like, dude, this guy, I hope this prick loses, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just didn't like the way he presented himself in like the weeks. The weeks and his, like, his perfectly manicured yeah. eyebrows, like they bother me. Like I know he kind of looks a little intimidating, and I'm sure he is in his own right. You know, obviously you see somebody walk up with that. I mean, regardless of the size, you're like, that's a lot of like pain threshold going, you know, those kind of tattoos you sure. know um but again it, i just don't think he presented himself that well I, if anything leading up to the fight i'm like cruz is totally in his head like this is totally exactly what cruz wanted you know you know kind of just dogging garbron like you know dissing him or whatever so i was like i really thought garbron had no chance i really did not but throughout the fight and still rooting for cruz throughout the fight i'm like wow like cruz is getting out cruised yeah he like, certainly did yeah just just the movement the footwork you know getting mocked you know, this is totally Cruz's alley, you know, and just seeing Garbron, I'm like, man, like, I can't help but just completely, like, he was always a good fighter, don't get me wrong, but now it's like, he's on a whole nother level. Like, it really was a changing of the guard in that division. It really was, and I think in 2016, we saw a changing of the guard for who, who the sort of the pound for pound guys are from top mm -hmm. to bottom, whether you're talking about heavyweights, you know, we saw, we saw Stipe Miocic have a really successful year, but for the bantamweight division, it wasn't the most, <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't the most popular division. Mm -hmm in uh, UFC and WEC history. But what you have now in 2016 is you have a viable division. This guy, Cody Garbrandt, could be a superstar. Mm -hmm. um, so and we were just talking about it last, last, uh, last show, like who can be like the breakout star in 2017. I think especially with the way it ended and you know him, and I know he's not doing it just, just for people to like him. You can tell he legitimately has a friendship with you know, this cancer-stricken or cancer patient who I think he sure. overcame it. Yeah, cancer now. survivor. Yeah. Um, cancer survivor, yeah. And you can tell everything was just legitimate. Everything was so, so sincere. You know, yeah. you can tell it meant a lot to the kid. You know, just one of those things where it's like, all right, I kind of like this guy now. Don't get me wrong. You yeah, know? And absolutely. It, and truly that, not just that. Now he's like, wow, this guy really is that good. He he, he beat Almeida, who, who was on the rise. He beat Mizugaki, who's always who's never easy. You know, now he like beat Dominic Cruz. He dominated Dominic Cruz. He dominated a dominant champion. Yeah. When you could say that at the end of the year, you had a good year. And I and I think of Cody Garbrandt. It's it's interesting because he has a little bit of an image confusion right now from the from the being so sweet and trying mm -hmm. to be you know be helpful to this kid to sort of like having a really bad promo on Fox Sports a few weeks ago yeah. and not really like 
Uh, his shit talking just really isn't on point for me. It kind of seemed forced, mm -hmm. uh, but I was really happy for him, and I'm happy to see what will happen between Cruz and him going forward because mm -hmm. earlier in that same card, we saw TJ Dillashaw with one of the most dominant performances of 2016, yeah. and Dillashaw at the end of this fight ends up calling out Dominic Cruz, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you, now you are two hours later, three hours later. Well, it turns out you called out the wrong guy because yeah. Cruz lost his title. Now, Cruz had beaten uh, TJ Dillashaw in 2016. I mean, 2017. Oh, no, 2016. 2016. I forgot, I forgot yeah. what you were in. Yeah, he, yeah. he didn't beat him in the future, <laughs> uh, but he beat him in 2016. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's sometimes hard to forget, like John Jones fought last year. Like yeah. things like it's it's hard to forget, like mm -hmm. how much stuff happened in 20, 2016. But with with um, uh, Dillashaw now being sort of the pseudo number one contender, mm -hmm. would you have rather have saw him go up against Dominic Cruz and see that rematch so that Dillashaw could have gotten his comeuppance, or are you okay with the fact that Cody Garbrandt has won and now he's the champ and we're going to see a new matchup between Dillashaw oh, and Garbrandt? I'm okay. I'm okay that Dillashaw didn't get his immediate rematch. I don't think he was that dominant as a champion where you got to get that immediate rematch. I didn't think he was that close of that fight early January where he could, you know, let's get an immediate rematch. I mean, it was okay. Like, I was fine with kind of Cody Garbrandt. I know there's been him and Brian Calloway kind of on the ups and things like that. So, again, and, and finally he was able to beat, or I know uh, Rafael Sunsau right. was kind of on the rise, but then Dillashaw beat him. So, I mean, I, I think it kind of played out perfectly fine. And TJ's a weird guy in the division, right? Like, with TJ Dillashaw, you have a guy who's, like, been up and down, yet if you watch his performance at 207, and I stress to you, please go find that mm -hmm. and watch it. Like, this is a guy who looks like he can't, like, no one can beat him. Um, and even Car even Cody Garbrandt's got to be like, damn, like I didn't expect T.J. Dillashaw yeah. to be my next opponent. And um, when do you expect him to fight? That would probably be like a March or April fight, you yeah, would maybe. imagine, maybe, I right? Mean, Garbrandt, he's, he's been pretty active in 2016. so But now but, he's the champ, so yeah, now, now he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, exactly. But now it's like, well, does he want to take the time off? And Because you know, maybe as a competitor, you want to get that first title defense out of the way. Yeah. Because you know you're not really a champion until you defend it for the first time. That's and you, true. you successfully defend it. That, yeah, I agree with that. But I think for Garbrandt, there's going to be a little bit of a lesson from the Conor McGregor mold mm -hmm. where it's like you need to just like sort of control the UFC and stop letting the UFC control you. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of guys are going to attempt to do that, although Garbrandt's certainly not the star mm -hmm. that uh, that Conor McGregor is. You, you end up having some leverage when you have that belt to do what you want. And I see no reason why he wouldn't fight in February, right? Because he really didn't get hurt in that fight. A couple mm -hmm. little nicks, yeah. right? But but I think for him, they're going to build something. Um, it'll probably be TJ Dillashaw, and both of them can kind of bump gums with the best of them. We might get some good promos for mm -hmm. that fight. A lot Maybe of history, a too. They both trained in Alpha Mill. Right. You know, TJ kind of trains more in Denver with, uh, what's that guy's name? Ludwig. Dwayne Ludwig. Ludwig, um, uh, yeah. So you know, we'll, we'll see how that kind of plays out. I know there's not any really bad blood, but you know, there's still they still have a lot to bring up, if anything. It's got to be interesting, right? If you're training with a guy, and Chris Howard, uh, unfortunately, not here today to shed some light on this, but it's got to be interesting when you're training and you, you know, you're on one big jujitsu mat and you see a guy over there, you know you weigh 205, he weighs 205, mm -hmm. and every once in a while you roll together and you're buddies, but yeah. you don't, you know... And then next thing you know, like that guy's the number one contender, and mm -hmm. you're the champion. And, and, yeah. and where do we go from here? And so, I, I imagine that'd be challenging. Like, like it's sort of weird to roll with guys you might fight for a million bucks someday. Mm -hmm. And and what do you show those guys in the gym? And Team Alpha Male, no stranger to drama over the years, um, as they've. I think that's that's uh, Uriah Faber's camp, right? Yeah. And so we saw a lot of crazy drama at the end of, of 2016 with with um, uh, who was the female? I'm sorry, the, the Paige Van Sant. Pa Paige Van Sant losing. Yeah. You know that was a crazy moment in 2016 because we had her start the year right on uh, Dancing, Dancing with, with the Stars, stars yeah. and then at the end of the year, like just kind of getting beat up, and 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 that was real crazy, man. Yeah. Um, uh, I think what I, what 2016 brought a lot is a lot of change into the guards. And, and you have seen in the past, we've seen a lot of guys like hold belts for years and years at the time. Anderson Silva, GSP, John Jones. Now, if you look at if you look at all the title holders, I think I, I didn't really go one by one, but a lot of the title holders they've all won the belt in like the last year or year and a half. I mean, I mean, certainly a lot of them. Look at Joanna Jacek. Uh, she's there. Um, Dominic Cruz losing his title, so of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Stepe Miocic. Stepe Miocic. Tyrone Woodley yeah. defeating Stephen Thompson earlier in the year. Demetrius Johnson, who he's, who, like the, he's the Anderson he's Silva like the guy. He's like the only exception to, the, to any rule, if anything. Yeah, well, he really is. Yeah. Like, there's no rules with that guy. Because back he's in the day, space used to alien. Because now, like, I think there are a lot more divisions that kind of have a. a a unclear one, two, three, four, five. Flyweight being the only one where it's like literally, clearly a distant number two. Yeah. Um, but now I, I kind of like even with like the band and weight, women's band and weight. It was like a trifecta of you know home, Rousey and Tate. 
Now you have Rousey, who knows when she's going to fight again. Tate retired. Holmes fighting for the one uh, 145 belt now. Right. So now you got like Pena. You know, who knows if Kent Zingano is going to come back. Um, Shevchenko, who defeated Holly Holm. And we not can't too long forget ago. about, uh, about well, she was at 35, but she won't fight there anymore. It was just Chris Cyborg. I mean, she probably won't ever make 35 again no, in her no, life. No. But I mean, the idea that these are all contenders there and that everyone's dancing, you know what I mean? And it's that same thing. You look across the party, you see someone there and you're jealous of that they're wearing the same dress as you. So like yeah. that's, that's what's happening in this, in this women's division. Because we started the year with Misha Tate beating Holly Holm after Holly Holm had just completely embarrassed Ronda Rousey, right? Yeah, a lot of people were thinking that Holly Holm was probably going to be the next, not the next Ronda Rousey, it's kind of hard to be that. Sure. But, you know, you, you would think that the way she beated Ronda Rousey, she's at least going to hold the belt for maybe for like a, of a year at least, you know, maybe defended it against a few people. Sure. I didn't think she was going to lose so fast. No, I certainly didn't either. But we, what we ended up seeing was that Tate beat Holm in her first title defense. Mm -hmm. And fast forward 2016, Happy New Year, everyone. It's 2017, Misha, reta Misha Tate retired. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. I mean, it's like the, what I can encourage anyone who's watching to do, if you love UFC, if you love anything, it's to stop looking into the future and worried about the destination and start to appreciate the journey. Mm -hmm. Because for all these fighters that you love, the Conor McGregor's or, or some of these other major stars that you really love at the beginning of 2017, they might not be here at the end of the year. Every fight they have, you got to watch. You got to buy tickets. You got to show up. You got to order the pay per view because you just never know when they're going to be gone. Misha Tate was one of my favorite fighters, mm -hmm. and now I'll never see her fight again. And that's a shame, you know? But I mean, I guess it's best for her family and, and these things. You could say all the nice, pretty stuff, yeah. but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, I, I love Misha Tate. I'm going to miss watching her whoop ass and oh, look good so, doing it. You she know she what still mean? looks good. She's not whooping ass doing it. Obviously, she's on right. the Fox panel, you know things like that so she's still looking good she does look good yeah. and she's staying on tv which is yeah. nice so no reason to complain there um you know i have to i have to switch gears here a little bit we talked about the changing of the guard we talked about the year being different i need to know what your thoughts are on on one name and i'm going to tell you this guy's name and i and i just want to know what you think for 2017 don't worry about his past don't worry about what's gone on before but in 2017 when i say the name john jones is there a 2017 for John Jones? Is there a way for this guy to erase some of the crazy history and the just really the the bad taste left in MMA fans' mouth? Is there a way to get rid of that if you're John Jones to become the beloved UFC 205 champion again and be the pound for pound number one guy in the world? I think there is. I mean, a matter of like public image. I mean, Mike Tyson ended up coming back. He did some a lot of stuff. More uh, even more horrible than John Jones. True. You know, J uh, Mike Tyson was doing things to other people. John Jones is just, oh, I mean, you can the crash, but like a lot of the stuff that he's got in trouble for recently, it's more so him doing it to himself. Crime against himself, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's a little bit more forgiving for John Jones. I think a lot of people have short term memory. I think once I kind of see if he can go, go if he can go back to being the John Jones that we all remember, remember. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it might take him a while, though. I think they're not going to give him like a top fight. But George Hermosa, hold on, hold on, dude. I need a hard prediction from you. Will we see John? Like, if you had to go with your gut, will John Jones be a threat? Will we? Will we be here in a year from now at UFC 2018? You know, the year interview for 2017. Will we be talking about John Jones and his incredible comeback or not? I think we will be, but I don't think he's going to get a title shot. Just. In, in this year. So they're going to make him dance a little bit yeah. this year. But you do see him fighting in a UFC cage this I year. I think he fights by August. Okay. So that's that's a that's a safe prediction because yeah. it's it's sort of like right there in the third quarter, beginning of the third quarter yeah, of the year. But but I do feel him maybe maybe against like a maybe obviously not against OSP, but maybe against like a Jimmy Manoa. We'll, we'll see. Can you if, imagine though? You're John Jones. You're really going to go. I mean, not that Jimmy. No disrespect to Jimmy Manoa, but the point is, is that someone's walking around with my title <laughs> if I'm John Jones, yeah. right? And so, why don't I want to go get that title? And like, and if you're Dana, like, but you do. But if you're a promoter, like, how can you? How can you put that? Put him in that position? So, good. <laughs> oh and yeah, because like they've really before. they've shown a lot of respect to like the <laughs> the legitimacy of MMA with Conor McGregor. Well, over the well last not year. even that. Just more so like the promotion. Like you had invested all this money. In a UFC 200, and then like three, literally three days before, he he's not even on the card anymore. Right. You know, and it's like it, it's just kind of hard. So let's see how he does, and, and you know, let's see now we put him back in the fold. I don't think Dana gives. Can't. I don't think Dana gives a shit whether or not right. he screwed yeah. them with a drug test. I mean, Dana's looking at this like if we can get Jones in there on what's what's today, January 5th. If we can get him to fight on January 6th, <laughs> and we announce it right now. 
I'm signing but, the fight. We're putting him in the cage. If it's too, for the title, oh well. But also, too, like he did not look impressive against OSP. He didn't. So but that was up for a year layoff. But yeah, exactly. So, so now he, he's got. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. so you're not going to put him back again against DC. Who's, who knows when he's going to fight again? Sure. But now it's like, oh, well, he's definitely. If he would have fought DC in April with against OSP instead, then he would have got destroyed. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? But I feel like if that if that John Jones showed up against Daniel Cormier, then I think DC would have completely annihilated, annihilated him. Yep. Well, you know, I mean, I think for me, it's like John Jones was the guy that I thought was like the goat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I always Anderson Silva was my favorite fighter, yeah. but but Jones had a way of always coming forward and still winning. Uh, there was a couple years ago, 2014, people started calling him cocky and all this other stuff. But for me, it was always just he didn't really know how to behave. Yeah. And that's probably the sign of a drug addict and a, and a guy who who's, you know, DUIs, all these other things that have happened to him, it's because he's not really ready to be a celebrity, but one thing he is ready for is beating the shit out of people in a UFC octagon. Yeah. And so, like, I I am, like, I, we have to have him back. And steroids, schmeroids, right? We're super fans. We don't work for the UFC company. Mm-hmm. So we could sit here and talk. I can give you my honest opinion about steroids, and that's it. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, I just don't. I know that it's happening in the NFL. People never talk about how the NFL has steroids. I know it happens in baseball still. Baseball went through basically almost a bankruptcy. The, the entire industry of Major League Baseball has taken a huge hit because of steroids. And then everyone talks about steroids in, in UFC, but when Brock did them, no one cared, mm-hmm. right? When other uh, uh, Hall of Famers Tito Ortiz, all these other guys are pissing dirty. No one cares, but they all put it on John Jones. To me, it's like it's everyone's on steroids, you know. And do I agree with it? Not really, but do I care? No. Mm-hmm. What, 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 give me your thoughts on steroids in 2016, 2017. I this mean, was I, a big topic 12 years ago. Is it still a big thing for you? I think it still is, and especially with you, you, the whole like it's like a new way. It's not. This wasn't like three years ago. You sat and now comes in and kind of you hear it now. It's not. It's not. It's not. So and so is pest positive. It's you sat a flag or substance right. now. So I mean, and I feel like now there's like a lot of loopholes where it's like you really got to maybe, maybe go into the extreme to really get suspended and fined. Yeah, because I, I think they feel like they I feel like they give you an opening to to defend yourself. Well, not three days before the fight. When they oh, get, yeah. I mean, know. that's a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, know? that was kind of like, you know, and with Jones and then it's Cormier, Cormier crying on the bench there waiting. Yeah. I mean, and you don't blame him. I mean, this is this is a huge payday he's missing out on mm-hmm. because of the irresponsibility of John Jones. And John Jones went on to say as the year went on that, you know, oh, well, I wasn't sure what I was eating or whatever. whatever what, he had a specific something like, quote, that, yeah. something like where he didn't know. I'm sick of it. Tainted, si- whatever. Yeah, I'm sick of it. But I also do, I also I'm over it. Yeah. And I want to see these guys. Again, get back I, in the I, feel, I feel like in the time in the time, it's like easy to be like, oh, well, screw that guy. He's ruining this. But a couple of days later, nobody's going to care anymore. True. Like, get over it. You know, go through go through whatever suspension you have to do, and then yeah, you'll be back, and everybody's going to forget. That is funny how how when things go wrong for people in, in in the public eye, oftentimes you know it's like the first forty eight people are just going crazy on them and talking mm-hmm. all kinds of smack, and then you know they order the pay per view next time that dude's on TV. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, vote with your dollar. If you don't like steroids, don't don't buy f- uh, fights featuring guys who are doing it. And if you really like fighting, you should support a guy like John Jones getting back in the cage because yeah. how much does steroids really do for the fact that you are like one of the most incredible MMA practitioners ever? Yeah. Certainly maybe like like getting healthy or maybe, you know, avoiding injury, maybe those things, maybe being a little stronger, right? But the idea that, that ster- steroids has made John Jones who he is is bullshit. It's not exactly, it's yeah. not the way it is. Um, we are gonna move on to some of the other names. I'm just gonna drop some names on you. And I would love for you to tell me, George Hermosa, what exactly your, your feelings are. Give me like a quick response on Michael Bisping, 2017. <laughs> Fairy tale. Fairy tale. Uh, what about Jose Aldo, 2017? Um, he should be. If, if, he's, if, he's, if he does as much as he talks, then it should be interesting. Because here's a guy who says, I'm going to go up to lightweight. Well, do it. You know, here's, here's a guy that's like, oh, screw Conor McGregor. Well, you lost like in 13 seconds, bro. Yeah. You know, so it's one of those things where it's like, like, if you're going to talk about it, then do it. Like, go up to lightweight. Cause that's but he's make... also talking about retiring. So is that something you want him to do? I mean, it's like... No, I, I, th- I think he did that b- before. But I think now that's a clearer picture in that featherweight division, which was in such disarray for pretty much all of 2016. Not yeah. just some. Yeah. All of it. Horrible year all for the featherweight it. division. The yeah. fact that it hasn't got defended once, to be honest with you, and they had to do an interim title uh, match oh, at UFC God. 200, when the champ has been completely healthy the whole time. Right. But So I don't blame his frustration, but again... 
if, if you're gonna defend it, I, I think I don't know if it's it's maybe it's unofficially official against Holloway. So yeah, unofficially official is the way I I read it with uh, that Holloway fight. That'll be a good fight. Holloway had a sick year, but a, a lot of people are picking Holloway over Aldo all day. I am too. Are you really? Yeah. Yeah, I think you were the one who was passionate about it last time we were talking off camera. The idea that that Max Holloway might be a guy who could be the <clears throat> excuse me could be the best in the world just. No one knows it. And, Give me a sec. No, I'll talk in the meantime. <laughs> and if you're gonna, and if if there's a guy who like Max Holloway, you don't like Max Holloway, then I don't want to be friends with you. Because yeah. here's a guy who <laughs> against Ricardo Lamas at UFC one ninety. I wasn't Ricardo Lamas against what UFC one ninety nine. It wasn't and, Lorenzo Lamas from uh, Renegade. Was <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Lo, uh, Lorenzo Ricardo Lamas from UFC one ninety nine, where he was clearly winning the fight. Yeah. Right. And clearly winning, like he had the fight. But the fact that he pretty much in the last fifteen seconds said, "All right, you and me, Lamas." Right here in the cage, all out. Like you're winning the fight and you're still willing to just bang like that. Yeah. That, Holy crap. No, I remember dude. exactly what you're talking about. I thought to myself it was a bad strategy. If he got <laughs> knocked out, he would have been called a fool. But what you end up saying about him is that he's he's building into his legend yeah. uh, for to be able to go at somebody like that when you know you have the rounds uh, in the pocket. So and the fact that he beat Pettis, like Pettis is insane. Pettis is awesome. But I don't know, maybe I mean he admitted maybe just one forty five is in his division. But like still, beating Anthony Pettis is pretty pretty legit. Uh, what about Joanna Jacek? J- Jen Jacek. Jen Jacek. Um, she's fun to watch at times. I mean, I, I I like her because she's such an accurate striker. Sure. Like she against her, especially against Cla- Claudia Gedalia. Right. Um, not UFC 200, but like a day before at the UFC uh, finale, UFC or tough finale. Man, she looks sick. I mean, she didn't look as impressive, I think, against uh, Karolina Kowalkiewicz. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I know I was late watching it, like as far as like late, late, late at night, like three in the morning watching. And I was yeah. like, oh, I kind of <laughs> want to go to sleep. So <laughs> that's your bad, bro. Yeah, exactly. So not that she put me to sleep, but I just couldn't help it. But I mean, I always think she's fun. She, that's another division where it's kind of like, I think we need a couple more bigger names. I know Nama Junas is kind of coming back up. Dude, I could um, just sit here and listen to you say these these Polish yeah. names all day. <laughs> I know Michelle Watterson looked looks sick, impressive against Van Sant, so that might be a nice you know a nice promote uh, fight to promote. You, sure. have, you know the Karate Hottie versus the Polish powerhouse. So and with with the Karate Hottie and and, um, and Watterson, right? Yeah. Um, She's beautiful, mm-hmm. but she also was just so impressive when she first came in and then followed it up with an impressive title win here uh, recently. Um, what I know about what, what I know about Watterson is, is that I think she could be that next megastar in UFC. Yeah. She has this sort of crossover Asian-American look going on. I really dig her. I think she's impressive in the cage, but she's also impressive out. She has this sort of kindness and sweetness that emanates yeah. from her when she interviews. She could be a big baby face, so mm-hmm. to speak, going forward in, in the world of MMA. Um, do you do you see her being kind of one of the biggest stars at the end of this year? 2017? I think so. She's definitely got the personality. She's got the look. She has to win fights. Yeah, she, I mean, she she definitely had a lot more eyeballs on her now that she was. You know, people were watching her to face Paige Van Sant. Wouldn't it be hilarious if they put her on uh, Dancing with the Stars this season? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, we'll see. I mean, that that does do a lot for somebody's career. You know, sure. new eyeballs and who knows? You know, just definitely she has that ability. And obviously, Asia is such a huge market for anything, not just UFC or MMA, but everything in general. Yeah, a um, lot of people there. Yeah, so again, Watterson can be at least, we'll see how she does if she ends up main eventing or maybe even you know fighting on one of those Asian cards. Uh, what happens next for Alistair Overeem? He, he lost a huge fight to Stipe Miocic. Uh, earlier in the year, maybe the third quarter, beginning of the third quarter of yeah, this September. year. September. Um, and, and what we saw now from from um, Alistair Overeem is that this is a guy who dominated all over Japan mm-hmm. in, the, in the early 2000s. And he's struggled in UFC. And no matter how close he gets to that brass ring, he can't seem to grab it. Um, is he done in 2017? Well, no, I think they already have him announced against Mark Hunt. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm talking about is he like is he a dead d- done deal like is he just a prize fighter forever? I think so yeah, he's just a prize fighter, right? He's and one like, of those guys where it's like, listen, going back to Rousey, where like, what is it you want to do in fighting? Because just I mean, I mean, if you want to, not go everybody for, wants to win a title. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. A lot of people maybe just look at it as a job, right? Maybe look at it as a, as a career that you know they can do Feed well. Feed their kids. Yeah, exactly. So what is it? Same thing with Silva, like Anderson Silva. What is it that you want to do in your career? You know, do your thing. Like we're not, we're not, you know, criticizing you. Just kind of make sure. Well, we just, we just want to make sure as fans that you know you're in the right path. Right. So you know, in, enjoy life, enjoy enjoy your fights. You know, be safe and you know. But I, I, I think as far as getting a legitimate title run, title shot, I, I think he he had his chance against Cipe. He he 
no, no excuses. So I think I think it's time to move on. And speaking of moving on, I want to move on to a little bit of a serious topic here. Um, you know, you know me in the professional wrestling business. I work as a commentator. I also work as a commentator and an announcer for Get Down Fights here in LA. It's a mixed martial arts organization that just went pro. Um, of, of course, Jay Tan has the U of MMA. I've oh. worked as a correspondent for Jay Tan before over there. Um, so I'm inundated in the MMA business, and I'm also a human being. And um, we saw UFC sold this year, and a lot of changes started happening. A lot of rumors started kind of milling around, and we didn't know what was going to happen with this guy or that guy or the other thing. Uh, UFC 205 was, or 207 was last week, and at the beginning of the week, everything was fine. Rainbows, kittens, grass was perfect height, you know, green, all mm -hmm. that stuff. And next thing you know, uh, Mike Goldberg loses his job. And for me, I, I just, I, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I got to tell you, like, I first heard Mike Goldberg and I could not stand his work. I didn't like him at all. But there was something, that was when I was just a fan, mm -hmm. right? And then I, I was able to start doing my own stuff and work and develop my own career as a commentator. And what I recognized about Mike Goldberg is there is nobody who is more perfect at his job than mm -hmm. him. Whether I liked him or not, whether Goldberg was a guy who was impressive to me or made me entertained or educated me as a fan, all of that aside, Mike Goldberg was a guy who could throw it to commercial. Mm -hmm. He could bring it back. He could promo a fight. He could call the ending. He was uniform. He was clean. He was dependent. He was consistent. And now he has no job. And I don't understand that. And recently, this week, we found out that Todd Grisham, formerly of WWE, a guy who I have a lot of respect for for being a great... Um, um, he, Todd Grisham is also very good at the specs of the job. Is not like it's he is Mike Goldberg. Mm -hmm. They're the same guy. Like what? Why would you, why would you fire him? I haven't heard any rumors. So if you know anything on the rumor mill, fill us in. But I don't. If you don't, tell us. Tell me your thoughts on the fact that this is a guy who really brought UFC on his back, mm -hmm. on his voice, so to speak. Yeah. And now he has no job. And with a three-day notice, they just can this guy, kicked into the curb. It bothered me, man. Yeah, it does. I and mean, I we, expect I expect Joe Rogan to go soon, too. Well, I mean, we've already seen kind of Joe Rogan take a less a lesser pro, a lesser role. I think he's been saying that he's not going to do any international events. I think we saw it. Uh, I think he's just going to do pay-per-views, if anything. I know he usually does. They both usually did the, the pay-per-views and the Fox cards. I think as recently as the last Fox card, I don't think Rogan did it. Right. I think Goldberg did it, but not Rogan. Right. So now we see already Rogan kind of taking less of a role. Um, Rogan, I think, is the best probably ever. To me, to me, Joe Rogan might be one of the best commentators at any sport yeah. ever. Like, you know, and I know that, that sounds like a big statement, but he is so educated and fine-tuned, yeah. and his timing is good, and he's entertaining, and he helps you to understand things, and he talks to you without patronizing you as a fan, mm -hmm. but helping you to... to under, I mean, this guy is the but best. But they, 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 together, they were just, oh my God, they that were was just the, amazing. That, that was, was like peanut combo. butter and jelly, man. And now we got rid of jelly. Like, wh who eats peanut butter sandwiches? You know? I don't. I don't either, and I don't eat Todd Grisham sandwiches either, because <laughs> Todd Grisham... For, for as good as he is at being like a well-rounded commentator type of guy, he's kind of a nerd. He's kind of like Mike Goldberg, like, which is fine, but why did you get rid of Mike Goldberg to bring in Mike Goldberg Jr.? Exactly. I don't get that. So maybe there was heat with him, and maybe the new ownership didn't wasn't a fan. And I, let me finish something I said earlier. I earlier mentioned that I wasn't a fan, but I, I, he grew on me. Mm -hmm. Like as 10 and 12 and 15 years goes by, and you're like, you know, Mike Goldberg is the UFC. Mm -hmm. um, you know... Um, you know, Tyrone Woodley is fighting <laughs> his first fight. Like that is what he does, right? But it, but it was like it was something. Ho it, like you felt like you were at home when you mm -hmm. listened to him. You know what I mean? And Grisham is good, but Grisham is not like a. There's no. He's not at an least upgrade. He's an MMA guy, though. Who Grisham? Yeah. Is is Grisham really an MMA guy? Because that's not my understanding. I mean, he is. I remember seeing him doing LA Galaxy coverage for <laughs> Fox Sports. Well, I and remember, WWE picked him up, which is not MMA. <laughs> well, I remember when he first went to ESPN. Um, ESPN had like an MMA live and okay. he hosted that every single week. Right. Um, and even like, I know he covered it a lot because I remember uh, a year and a half ago, or almost two years ago, when MMA or Invicta was actually here in LA. I, that's where I met Todd Grisham and super nice guy, super kind guy. And you can tell that he really was into the MMA. So at least, at least I know there's some 
you know, comfort knowing that they're not, he's not just some random. Anything next for Mike Goldberg? Is he going to get picked up by somebody? I mean, there's no reason ESPN shouldn't offer him a job to do commentary. Yeah. Not, not commentary on fight life fights, well, but I know like they, commentary on like what happened, like what we're doing. I know, you know he I mean? tried the football, wasn't really that good at it. He right. just didn't, I mean, I, I remember he did a couple college football games because he, you know, with the Fox thing. And I know he didn't really come across that or just wasn't, wasn't really meshed that well. So who knows? Maybe. Maybe boxing. I don't know. I, I, I certainly don't mean to spend too much time talking about Mike Goldberg, but for me, it was like a big deal because this is like one of the first dominoes to yeah. me that starts to fall. And we saw this year, we saw 42 events scheduled this year. We only had one cancellation, which mm-hmm. is huge. I think in past years, they've, they've canceled more than that. And mm-hmm. they had major, major injuries this year, man. And yet they still were able to persevere yeah. and continue to work. Um, but what I know about, about Goldberg is that this might be like that first sign of things are really about to change within this company. And when you lose Joe Rogan, you, you lose part yeah. of me as a fan. Mm-hmm. You do. I know a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of fighters always have a strong opinion on Dana White. Like, you know, people, you know, obviously he, he's, he's a promoter, so he doesn't really care. He just wants right. to promote fights. But never once did I hear anything bad say about the Fertitas. Yeah. Like, everybody loved the Fertitas. Right. And when so. they sold, I think it was tragic for a lot of guys. Yeah. What you saw was you saw the, the Fertitta brothers, uh, Lorenzo and um, Frank, mm-hmm. sell the company this year to a major corporate conglomerate uh, sort of consisting of a lot of celebrities, one of them being uh, Conan O'Brien and a few other names that you had mentioned before, uh, George. But what you saw was you saw them sell the company, and at the same time, by no coincidence, you end up starting to see these little unions spring up, mm-hmm. right? These fighters are wondering why they're not getting paid as much as those fighters and these guys are going to start their own little union over here and so you're starting to see what i think is the new evolution of this sport and the ufc that you are aware of as fans at home and we are aware of here on our panel i don't think it's i don't think it's going to be the same in 2017 and this will be an interesting year to really focus on the business Mm -hmm. of ufc and not so much on just the fights fights are great but where can we find this company in a year from now? Where where will its where will the state and the morale of the company be? I think we're gonna see something that maybe no one even expected. Like I can say something, we're like, wow, that came out of left field. I don't know, maybe more unions come up. I know we had that weird union with Kane Velasquez and yep. Bjorn Rebney and, and Donald Cerrone. Like, okay, that was kind of random. Yeah. You have all these this guy Dana White. By what, the way, what do Kane Velasquez and, and Donald Cerrone have to talk about? I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, can you imagine being in the room with them for those conversations? Yeah. Like that would be pretty strange. Um, and you're right, man. Yeah, really crazy stuff. But we're going to see this thing change a lot in 2017. I'm excited for 2017, 2017 to see where this goes. One of my predictions for uh, MMA as a whole in 2017 is is the uprising of Bellator. I know that people have thought Bellator has plateaued. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, I think that you're going to see a few more names go over that way um, and to sort of raise the stock of Bellator and Bellator may then, if they react well to it, sell some more pay-per-views and become a more viable card in the United States for fighters to fight with. I don't think it'll ever be UFC, mm-hmm. but the more that the, this, this new company who knows nothing about MMA, and Fertitta's, in, to fair, in fairness to them, didn't either when they mm-hmm. first bought it, but they were 15-year vets of, the, of MMA by the time they sold it. Mm-hmm. This new conglomerate here, and you and I are pro wrestling fans. We also just saw TNA just got by a, a major media conglomerate. Not so sure it's always good for business. Mm-hmm. Not so sure that uh, that these guys should be, you know, for Tita's, like you said, it was a family operation, man. And people loved mm-hmm. going to their house for dinner and asking for a raise. Can you do that when you're owned mm-hmm. by uh, corporate shareholders? I don't, yeah. know, I don't know that you I can. Feel like, I feel like for Tita's maybe always at least had the best interest in, in everybody. I know a lot of people may disagree. I know... I think more so the Dana White, you know, got, you know, I feel like Dana White is, it was a whole different mentality, but it's like, who do you go to? You know, do I go to Conan O'Brien to, to, to ask, you know, stuff? I know Connor, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I know we haven't even touched Connor at all. I know we're, that's a big thing to talk about now. Um, like he wants a piece of it. I don't know how serious he was, you know, but who knows? Yeah. Well, you know, it's actually a perfect time to talk about Connor, kind of wrap up this year in 2017, because 2017 for me was the year of Connor McGregor. And... For no other reason than how talented he is, wait, hold up, not actually, maybe because of a little bit of corruption within UFC too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if if you were going to ask me what my synopsis was of 2017 and how this worked out uh, in terms of booking and Connor, the relationship between the man crush between Dana Mm -hmm. and Connor, um, it all makes sense. They want to make money, and Connor, you know, makes them the most money. It's like when football uh, coaches say, we're putting in George Hermosa at quarterback because he gives us the best chance to win. Mm-hmm. Well, the best chance to win if you're Dana White or if you're anybody representing UFC is to have a big, huge, thick, black bottom line, mm-hmm. right? And 
you know, ultimately, that's what we want to see. And so we saw it in 2017. We saw record numbers from pay-per-view numbers being broken in, in, in February to being broken in April to being broken in, in December with Ronda Rousey. Um, we, we see the business side going up, mm-hmm. but is the trust of the fans being jeopardized when you show this much love to Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey getting a title shot after getting... Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. I mean, I th- I'm think i hoping that they got that out of the system because I feel like... I, I'm not hoping, you know, because obviously yeah. we, we've heard rumblings of, you know, maybe Bisbing versus Woodley. Who knows? I right. really hope not. I really, really hope not at a catchweight because now you're holding up two title belts. Um, but yes, it really was the year of Conor and just in every single way. Um, and, I, and I get it. You know, it's one of those things where if you were a promoter, promoter Christian Cole, like every at some point, you're always going to have a number one guy by default. Right. Yeah. You have to. Right. By default, you're always going to have a number one guy. But Conor McGregor, like he is like beyond he's alpha one. omega yeah like, he, he's different yeah. to say that he's just the number one guy is an understatement like he's a guy who you know even with you know ronda rousey john jones brock lesnar as big draws like connor i feel like he's a record breaker now you look yeah. at you how many buys ufc 205 then that's just insane yeah my, my fear i mean what you're saying is right george but my fear had mostly to do with whether they were going to jeopardize the um the overall sort of uh, sanctity and sort of you know the honesty behind the company, you know, it's the integrity, the integrity of the sport. Yeah. And what you see from Conor McGregor is you see a guy who's just been given, you know, he gets his ass beat by Nate, by Nate Diaz and then he comes back and gets another title shot. So, yeah. um, not I even w- that, like, it's not even in his welt in, in, in his weight division. Right. And I get it. I completely get it. Like, it's one of those things where we all remember it was originally supposed to be, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos against Conor McGregor title for title or not title, but title for, the light, the lightweight title, right. um, and you know he's already bulking up to, to come down. And so you you couldn't do a fight at featherweight because he already said you, uh, Connor was going to fight no matter what. Um, so he couldn't do one at featherweight because he was already training to be lightweight. So it's like, hey, well, just to make it easy for you, let's do one at welterweight so you don't have to drop any weight. Um, and I get it, you know, like it, it did big business, good for Nate Diaz, and obviously Certainly. he he you know made himself probably a millionaire. Um, but then the whole UFC two hundred thing, like. Like not showing up to the press conference, and I and I can tell Dana why. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, like he hated it, but it's like, dude, it's your own doing, you know. Yeah. You gave him this much power. Yeah, and part of it is like the fact that you could talk about it for a week. The fact that he no showed the press conference is like good for business anyway, because you just talk about it for a whole week, and there's drama between Dana and and Connor, and people are eating it up, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, George, one last thing to look for in 2017 before we go. We're running out of time. I think, really? Yeah, I thought we were just going to keep going on and on. You want to just um, go forever? Let's just go forever. <laughs> let's just wait until they put off some notes. Um, I mean, as far as 2017 goes, I think we're going to see this emergence of, the like, like I mentioned before, a lot of the guards changing. Now we're going to see these new guys come up. Cordy Garbrandt, Max Holloway. You know, I know Young Chechek kind of is still relatively new in, in, on the scene, you know. Um, so I'm kind of happy for them. You know, I, I think we're kind of see like maybe the end of the road for a lot of these guys. Obviously, I think BJ Penn's fighting in a week or two. Yeah, he is. So maybe he might come back. You know, maybe one more, one or two more fights. You have Josie Aldo maybe possibly. You know, retiring soon. So I think I think now it's like the new guard. You know, it, it, I think when when we first started watching MMA, it was the Chuck Liddells, the Rich Franklins, the Matt Hughes, the Tim Silvas. You know, all those guys. And now it's like, well, now it's the new crop. Sure. You know, those guys are gone. Then in came GSP, Silva, you know, Bisbing and all those guys. And I feel like, you know, now now it's the it new change feels like the guard, that. Yeah, you know? it feels a little bit like a generational change that we're witnessing here. And 2017 will only propel that forward. Um, for me, the thing to look out for in 2017 is the end of Conor McGregor and his career. I, I actually do. This is not a joke. I'm not throwing shade at my guy. I don't hate him. I just think that, like, you can only be so dominant for so long. I think he'll get exposed a couple more times this year within that 155-pound mm-hmm. division. And uh, ultimately, his star will, br- will will shine a little bit more dim See, next I year. I think of Conor as somebody who, like, he's going to try to get as much as he can in a short amount of time. Because, like you mentioned earlier, you don't know when it's going to be the last time. He can pull like a Misha Tate and just retire for good. Yeah. You know, you don't know when the last time they're going to fight is. You can just say, you know what, I'm retiring. You know, I love fatherhood. I don't want to ever be apart from my child and, you know, pretty much retire forever. He's obviously financially, you know, you know, uh, stabilized. Yeah. You know, so I mean. <laughs> you like, think? But yeah. So it's Maybe not of, with those $80,000 suits he's always who knows, wearing. Yeah, who but knows? Who knows? like I said, I, I think if we do see the end of Connor, I think it's going to be more because of that. Because somebody who's just, he, he recognizes the star value that he has and he's going to say, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I can. I'm going to get that Mayweather fight. 
and just just retire off of that. We, George, are we going to see that fight? <laughs> not in 2017. Not this year. I don't know. I, again, I don't know. It's so hard to say because who knows? Like at this point, that's the fight I want to see more than anything else. Oh, yeah, maybe. I mean, because even though I do think like Floyd will beat him up, mm-hmm. like I just that's the fight I want to see. And I'm really I'm really hoping that they do officially announce a rematch, and I really want to see Wonder Boy become welterweight champion. I know we started off the year with a sick fight between Robbie Lawler and Carlos Condit. Um, and that's another guy who, like, and maybe it's at the end of his career, Carlos Condit. I know he lost against Damian Maia back in August. Carlos Condit was the first fight of the year in 2016, and here we are, 2017, talking about it could be the end of his career. Yeah, I hope not, because I think he's still relatively young, but I really hope to see Wonder Boy. And hopefully, no more no more divisions held up in limbo. Amen to that. I, I think if you're a champion, your main priority should be to, to vend the belt, if, especially if you're healthy. Yeah. You know, don't talk about, unless you dominate that championship. I think Demetrius Johnson is the only person who has a right to say... I want to fight for a different title or different division's uh, title belt. Demetrius Johnson should fight Floyd Mayweather. Dude, that should, yeah, he should. But that'd be a <laughs> sick fight, though. Demetrius against Cordy Garnbrandt. That would be a good fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cody's got to build it a little bit longer, but then I agree with you if that if they can. But that's the thing. DJ's so good and he's so been so dominant that where if he wants a bantamweight title shot, I think you should. I think you should give it to him. Cheers to that, uh, George. Where can we find you in 2017, my friend? Well, 2017, you can find me at G Hermosa, G H E R M O Z A. Keep it going. I know, I know. Uh, I want to hear tweets of people who think that a uh, fighter of the year, knockout of the year, submission of the year, shocker of the year. I know. First of all, shocker of the year, Ronda Rousey just completely getting not her losing, just her getting just annihilated. Like that's still like in shock to me. Absolutely, yeah. Like she got, she got beat up. Yeah, real bad. Yeah, real, CM real Punk. Bad. Don't forget CM Punk. Don't forget about him. I don't forget about CM Punk. Okay. We're wrestling fans. You think he's gonna fight again? Uh, I do think he'll fight For again. For UFC? Yeah, I do think so. He's worth too much money. Make a call. Uh, you think he's no, legit? Uh, Mickey Gall's super legit. We could just riff all night, man, me and you. Talk about wrestling and MMA. Let's and the do crossover. it. Let's just, you know, you know when, when the cameras turn off, lights go off, we'll still be here. That's right. Um, guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much for a great year in 2016 and joining us. The best way that you can get this UFC show to take off, to explode, is to share it. Share it right now on your Facebook. Go on your Twitter. Tweet us. Talk to us about what's going on. We want you to join the conversation. What do you want to see from us in 2017? What kind of AfterBuzz shows suit you? How can we help listen to the fans and make this a unique experience for all of us? Um, for George Hermosa, my name is Christian Cole. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Cole. Thank you so much to Maria and Kevin and to the to the producers here who work really hard for us. Oh, 2017, Steve we're going to make Steve Mark, and Phil, everybody. Jimbo. Mark, Jimbo's awesome. Uh, we're going to have an amazing year, everyone. Thank you so much. This has been UFC's After, After Buzz coverage. My name's Christian Cole. That's George Ramosa. Goodbye, everybody. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.